Chapter 45. What happens when you're offended? A few years ago, I watched comedian Steve Hughes talk about being offended. He made a great point. If you're offended, nothing happens. You're just offended. Apart from finding this funny, I realized he was making a very valid point. Many of us get upset when we feel offended by something someone else has said or done. But being offended is entirely subjective. We aren't all offended by the same things. And what offends us today may not even offend us a few years from now, and vice versa. Maybe when we were younger, we were told a silly joke that we wouldn't find funny today. My favourite joke when I was younger was about a magic slide. Whatever you said while you went down the slide, you landed in it. The joke went that some people said gold, diamonds, or money. And then a little boy slid down the slide yelling, Wee! I found that joke so funny for years, until one day I no longer did and considered it childish. Now I admit I find it funny again. Perhaps once upon a time, if someone was short with us, we'd immediately take offence and think that they had no manners. But nowadays, if the same thing happens, we might assume they are having a bad day, and we don't take it personally. When I was a teenager, I often made up stories about others being rude to me. Someone might ask if they could help me when I entered a shop, and I would make up a story that they thought I was a shoplifter. Now I enjoy it when I enter a shop and someone asks if they can help me. In each of these cases, it's our thoughts that determine whether we're offended or not. When we view being offended through the lens of the misunderstandings around thought, it's clear that the feeling of being offended is just a feeling. It's an indicator of our thinking, nothing more. And like all other feelings, it's not telling us how offensive something is. All it's telling us is that we feel offended based on our thinking in that moment. Knowing this gives us a huge amount of perspective and personal power. If, for example, I'm offended by a certain political candidate's comments, and I don't realise that I'm actually feeling offended because of my thinking about their comments, when I hear their rhetoric, I have no choice but to feel offended. I blame my feeling of being offended on what I hear. But if I know that this feeling of being offended is just a feeling, then I don't need to do anything about it. I may realise the candidate has different views from me. I may think they are misguided, but I don't need to waste my energy being offended by them. In fact, being offended often has an interesting way of playing out in the world. Many times, fringe political parties are given more airtime and coverage because numerous people are offended by them. If no one paid them any attention, they would be more likely to simple fall simply fall by the political wayside. You can think of your own offended feelings the same way. Stop giving them coverage and they'll fall by the wayside. Allow me to reiterate something I've said several times already. I'm not saying you shouldn't stand up for yourself or to people who are spouting hate. My goal is not to direct you to engage in any particular type of action. What I am saying is that if you take action based on the idea that someone else is responsible for offending you, then you're misguided. Any actions you take based on those feelings may actually turn out to be counterproductive. I discussed my own experience of this in the chapter on racism. Imagine someone or something that has offended you in the past. How would you react differently if you hadn't felt offended by what was said or done? or if the feeling of being offended was fleeting and only lasted momentarily. When I first read this chapter, it it took a few days actually before um, something came through. And then when it did, it took me right back to childhood, um, to a situation where um, I don't remember the detail, but I remember kind of uh, complaining to, to my mum that this other boy in my class was was bullying me. And and he wasn't bullying me physically. He was he was kind of threatening that he'd he'd make up a story and tell the teacher that I had done it. 
And maybe it was the kind of thing that I would do so the teacher might believe it and then I get into trouble. And, and as a child, I didn't really like getting into trouble, which I do kind of giggle at nowadays, actually. But anyway, as a young boy, I didn't I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that feeling. And so I'd complain to my mom and she would have spoken to the teacher and so on and so on. And a whole a whole kind of a whole world would have sprung up out of that out of that belief that that somehow this boy had a power over me. Uh, a power to make me feel a certain way. Uh, a power of 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 making me feel smaller or worried or like he had control over the destiny of my life. Um, and because it's a long time ago, it's di it's difficult to imagine really like how things might have played out differently if when he'd have said that, I'd have I'd have just I'd have realized that that he had no power over me at all, that the stories he was threatening to make up would have just been stories. And and how much more powerful it would have been just to to see that and know that and maybe even to share that with him and say, look, you, you could do that. But I honestly know in my heart of heart, I didn't do those things. And I'll be able to say that to the teacher at the same time. So so in there, you can probably hear all sorts of 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 ways that 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 story could have played out differently. Had had I not been under the misunderstanding that the way I was feeling was was coming from him, that that he had the power to bully me. And, and what I realized, and I'm not in any way belittling anyone else's experience of, of bullying. But what I realized for me was that the only person who, who has ever bullied me is me. I'm the only person that has the power to do that. I'm the only one who can empower somebody else to cause my own offense.